Good morning. Good morning. We are so glad you are here with us um, to worship at Southern Crescent. If you will stand with us as we sing, Come Behold the Wondrous Mystery. Good morning, church. It is great to be with you this morning, and my name is House. I'm the student pastor here, and it's my privilege to simply welcome you and say thank you for being here. And if you are a guest, we just consider you an honored guest in this place because we believe the Lord is a sovereign God, and so we believe you're not here by accident, that he led you here on purpose. And so we are grateful for your presence, and if you're watching online, we're grateful you're watching as well. And so we, we are just thankful to be able to be together, to be the church, to uplift the name of Jesus, and to encourage one another. As we do that, I also have a few announcements I want to make you aware of. I know that school is only like one week away, week and a half or some. Uh, and so we want to be prepared for that and be praying for that. And there is a, I guess it's a campaign that's taking place throughout the state of Georgia called Pray for Schools. Uh, and so this Saturday, 9 a.m., they're inviting anybody who would like to to show up at any school near you and just spend time praying over that school specifically, whether private school or public school. Uh, and so it's not necessarily a guided prayer time at that school, but if you just want to go and show up and uh, just walk the school grounds for a little bit and just pray over that school for the teachers, for the students, that God will be glorified. It's going to be taking place all over Henry County. And so it's just something that we can be a part of. Now, I also want you to know that we're making plans in June to possibly plan an international mission trip to Guatemala. 
Uh, and so in two weeks, we're going to have an interest meeting in the back of the, in our chapel back there, right after church on August 6th. It'll be sometime in June. We're working out the dates. Uh, I'll have for you the calls and some of the other info. So you're not committing to it, but for hey, that, that piques my interest. I might like to do that. In two weeks, come to the interest meeting, and we'll go over some of the details. Uh, and then last thing, Awana is going to start August 9th. And so if you have a, a child uh, who is ready for that, sign them up online. But we're also looking for volunteers. If you would like to be a part of that, you can see Miss Vicki Glaze. If you don't know who she is, find me, and then I'll introduce you to her. Uh, she, her and Miss Kendall are going to lead it again. Uh, and so we're just looking for a few volunteers to be able to fill the needs there just as we continue to love on the kids in this community. But today we are excited to be together. We're excited to lift high the name of Jesus. We're excited to worship the Lord because he is good and he is faithful and he has given us life today to be together. And so would you join me in time of prayer? And would you just take a moment right now? Would you just voice a prayer to God asking him to speak to your heart this morning to prepare yourself for worship? Father, you know our hearts, and we humble ourselves before you because you are the almighty God. You are the one who gives life, who gives breath, and we recognize in your grace and mercy and sovereignty you have brought us together today. You have called each person to be here. They're not here by accident. And you desire to fill this place and to speak to each individual heart. And I pray that we would be open to whatever it is you desire to do in our lives. That we would recognize that we're not here to be entertained. We're not here to simply have our lives tickled by what we want to hear. But we're here, God, because we want to hear from you. And we want to be encouraged by the body of Christ. So in humbleness, we just lay our preconceived notions before you, and we say, God, have your way. And we pray that through the time of worship, through song, that we would just simply lift our voices together and that you would be honored and glorified. And we pray as Pastor Don comes, the message you've laid on his heart, we thank you that you will speak through him, that your word will be opened, and may you find our hearts and our ears ready to hear. And when we respond in obedience to whatever it is you call us to do, whether it's repentance, whether it's forgiveness, whether it's things you lead us to do in action as we leave here. And Father, as we get ready to a new school year, I pray for these students and the teachers. I pray even now that you would prepare them. Because they're not simply there to get an education or to teach, but they're there to make your name known. And open up their, their eyes to those opportunities to live for you. God, as we get ready for Awana, that you would provide all the volunteers that we need, that you would stir the hearts of those that are here to be able to minister to those kids. And even as we think about things in the future, as we think about this international trip, that you would prepare us, God, even now for what you'll do nine months from now. God, that you would just give us every detail that we would need to be able to prepare our hearts to serve you. And so we thank you, God. We thank you that you desire to use us today and speak to us today. And we just join our hearts and lift your name on high. So have your way in this service, O Lord, for you are worthy. And we ask this all in Christ's name. Amen. And now, if you would, would you stand as we continue to worship together? In this time of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe, we believe In this broken generation, 
When all is dark, you help us see. And there is only one salvation. We believe, we believe. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. We believe. So let our faith be more than anthems. And greater than the songs we and in our weakness and temptations we believe we believe we believe in god the father we believe in jesus christ we believe in the holy spirit and he's given it tells us but whatever gain I had I count as loss for the sake of Christ indeed I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ my Lord
great truth regardless of what else we have Jesus and we're grateful and he is all we need uh, it's good to be with you to see that you've come through the week God's brought you through the week you look blessed and so God has been good amen so we get to just honor him and praise him and worship him through the giving of the tithes and offerings so we we'll ask if our ushers would come forward and uh, or come out from amongst them. And let's pray. Father, we are grateful for the goodness of your grace, for the way, Lord, that you have brought us through this week. Uh, you have um, kept us through the heat. Father, you have given us food. You have provided everything and even greater than that you have given us Christ so as we give these tithes and offerings Lord may they just be an act of worship to you today as we say thank you in Jesus name amen Not a 
God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. Sing that. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. Amen. Take your Bibles and open them to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, if you've been with us the last few weeks, then you know that, um, or you should know that we've been in a study of this model prayer, the disciples' prayer. Um, I guess tradition has called it the Lord's Prayer. We've looked at all different aspects of it, and we're coming to the conclusion of it today. Um, so we're going to be looking at verse 13 in Matthew chapter 6. I, um, I've told you all this before. Sometimes I always look, um, sometimes I always. Sometimes I look for free books for my Kindle, right? Um, just because I'm cheap. But uh, one of the books, I just wanted to read some some more, tr what would they be, classics. So I found Robinson Crusoe, uh, and it's a public domain thing, and so I was reading Robinson Crusoe, and I don't, I, maybe I read it when I was a kid, but i um, just been blessed by it, and I was reading last night, 
And I came upon a quote that I thought, man, this really fits with what we're going to be talking about today. So I just want to give you this quote. Punch my button. Um, maybe it'll encourage you. But um, he says, and I add this part here to hint to whoever shall read it. That whenever they come to a true sense of things, when they ever figure what life's really all about, they will find deliverance from sin a much greater blessing than deliverance from affliction. And I'm not sure we in, typically look at life that way. Right? When we don't want any affliction. We'll deal with the sin thing. But he had come to understand, Crusoe had come to understand, that deliverance from sin was a much greater blessing than deliverance from affliction. So let's look at this passage of Scripture in Matthew chapter 6. Stand with me. I'm, I know each week or almost every week that I've been reading this whole prayer, and I want to do it again as we finish it up today. Verse 9, chapter 6, Jesus has is in this Sermon on the Mount. He is teaching his disciples, and that is, is, and there's a multitude of people behind just listening to what he's saying. And he says, In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven. There's that relationship. It's all about our relationship with the Father. All hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Lord, help us to understand this today. And Father, I do pray that I would be, um, that I would seek and in my heart to, to be true to your word, that I would explain this in a manner that would be um, helpful, um, but also convicting, Lord, where we need to be convicted. Father, we uh, are grateful for your goodness again in our lives we're, we're grateful that you give us your word and that when that in this world how, how to navigate this world you have given us truth and may we live by it and may we long for it and may we just desire to um, obey it in our lives as we pray in Jesus name amen amen one of the things that you notice, and we talked about it last week, is that these last three prayer requests are tied together by the word and, right? Um, and, and so you take that and, if it's a connecting word, go find out what it's connected to. And it's connected to that first request of give us this day our daily bread. So um, you understand that all of these requests are meant to be daily requests are not meant to just to be Sunday to Sunday or whenever you feel like it to whenever you feel like it but day by day and and if you're like me um, moment by moment sometimes it needs to be moment by moment but when you think about it it makes sense that they're all tied together right because there's a very natural progression that goes on here um, every day we acknowledge that the Lord is the provider of everything we have and we trust him for what we will need for that day. Give us this day our daily bread. And because we are blessed with that type of relationship with the hallowed, the holy, heavenly Father, every day we ought to go to the Lord for cleansing to keep our fellowship clean and close. And, and if we do that, and we ask the Lord to forgive us our sins, forgive us our debts as we forgive those who, 
who are our debtors, then it only follows then that the next thing we would ask is that our Father would keep us from doing the things that we just asked Him to forgive us of, or of which we just asked Him to forgive us, to be correct. So Jesus teaches that these things, ought to be a part of our daily prayer out of our daily in our daily relationship with the Lord. So we've come to this last one in verse 13 and um, as we learn to pray, Jesus teaches us first of all to pray for God's direction, to pray for God's direction and lead us not into temptation. Now I'm going to be real honest with you this is a this is a tough one. it's um, it's, it's difficult because if you look, when you look at it, at first it seems like a kind of a strange request, doesn't it? I mean, if you take it out of context, then it could look like Jesus is saying that God must be the one who tempts us to sin. All right, lead us, Lord, don't, don't tempt us, don't lead us into temptation. But if you're going to get there, then you've got to... Um, you're going to have to forget the relationship we have in the first place, right? Because if we're asking God to not tempt us, then we might as well scratch out that first part of the prayer where it says, Our Father. Because what kind of father would tempt his children to do something that would be harmful to them and something that would grieve him? And, And while you're scratching out Our Father, you might as well scratch out the hallowed be your name as well. But not only would you have to forget the relationship, you'd have to forget the rest of Scripture because James tells us in chapter 1, verse 13, he says, let nobody say when they're tempted, I'm tempted by God. Because God can't be tempted by evil, neither does he tempt anyone. So James is reminding us God does not tempt anyone. You go back to the Old Testament and Habakkuk, puts it this way in Habakkuk 1, your eyes are too pure to approve evil and you cannot look upon wickedness with favor. So if God doesn't tempt us to sin, then what does it mean then? What, is, what are we talking about when we pray, lead us not into temptation? Well, one of the first things we need to, uh, that may help is if we understand the word temptation. Uh, in the Greek, um, the word is perasmus. It's a neutral word. And what I mean by that is it can be translated temptation. It can be translated trial. Either one of those. It all depends upon the context in which you find it. So let me show you. You go back to James again, chapter 1. Remember, let no one say when they're tempted, I'm tempted by God. That's that word, perasmus. Okay, and then... A little before that, James had written and said, My brothers, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Guess what the word is? It's the very same word again. So uh, there are some who say, Well, yes, see, Jesus is just teaching his disciples to pray for God not to allow them to go under serious or severe trials. But Jesus knew they would face trials. Right? In John 16, he says, in this world you will have tribulation. In this world you will have tribulation. Romans 5, Paul talks about how trials can produce godly character in the lives of believers. We live in a fallen world, folks. And so we're going to face some hardship. We're going to face some kind of trial. But we look at it again and I think it's always good to interpret Scripture in light of Scripture. If you're, always, if you're concerned about what one thing means, then see it in light of all of Scripture. And we know God does not um, entice us to do wrong, so we don't have to ask Him to tempt us. And we know we're going to face trials, so we don't, uh, we're not asking Him necessarily to keep us from all of our trials. And we know whether we like it or not, because we live in this fallen world, we're going to face temptation. So when we look at this, what are we asking God to do? We're asking God to, bottom line, to lead us, right? Not to not lead us, but to lead us not. 
So uh, to lead, it's uh, here, it, it's not the typical word. When we think of lead, sometimes we think more in terms of direct somebody. You go here, you do this. If you do all of that, then, then I'm leading you and, and you're following. But that's not the word Jesus uses here. It's a word that means to bring or to carry. Then you say, well, what's the difference? Well, it, what it's, 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 the difference is God's not going to be sending us like a general ordering his troops from the headquarters, but rather he is going to be leading us like a shepherd walking with his sheep, even if we're in the valley of the shadow of death. Now, I'm going to speak for you right now. And you're probably thinking that's all well and good, but it doesn't help me understand what, <laughs> what it says. And, and, and what I want us to understand this morning is don't get so caught up that we miss the spirit of this. Jesus is teaching his disciples the danger of ignoring God's word. This is a prayer, lead us not into temptation, this is a prayer of a man or woman who understands sin's power and doesn't want it to be at home in their hearts. Do you understand? It's a prayer of someone who doesn't want to grieve the Father, who doesn't want to mock the cross. Now, temptation in and of itself, it's, it's not sin. Any more than going through a trial would be sin. But, but if we're not careful, if our heart isn't vigilant, then it will lead us to sin. And sin leads to broken fellowship with the Father. And we desperately need our Father's help in staying away from sin. In reality, this, is a, a, this prayer is a commitment to purity. And, and, and I thought, well, I don't want to use this next word because it's so churchy. But there's a word we need to get back into our everyday vernacular, friends. It is a call to holiness. It's a call to holiness. A set-apartness. It is a willingness to flee certain things to pursue God. See, by our request, we're saying, Father, we don't want to sin. I, I, I don't want to sin. Keep that from me. You, you know, it's like in Psalm 51 where David confessed his sin um, to the Lord. And he said, create in me a clean heart and renew within me a steadfast spirit. Right? In other words, God, I don't want you just to forgive me of my sin. I want my heart to be where I don't do that again. I don't want to do that again. He prayed something similar in Psalm 141. Let not my heart be drawn to what is evil to take part in wicked deeds with men who are evildoers. But now, as, as we pray that God would keep us away from that, it does not relieve us of our responsibility, right? I mean, at the same time we ask God to lead us, we have to be careful where we let ourselves go. Does that make sense? Of deliberately putting ourselves in the place of temptation. There are times when we need to set our phones down or our iPad down because you know you're being tempted, right? Don't leave it open. Don't go to that place and say, God, don't, 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 let, me, don't let me sin. God's already given you what you need. He has given you the awareness that you're being tempted. And he's also given you the coordination, the physical coordination to take that phone and to set it down. And I'm not 
I'm not knocking technology. I'm so grateful for it. But who knew that a day would come when we would walk around with temptation in our pocket? We need a commitment to purity. But it's not only, this prayer is not only a commitment to purity, it's a confession of dependency. Right? Because if we're asking God to lead us, then the, what's the logical conclusion? What does that say about our responsibility? If he leads us, we should follow. Right? That, that's it. We're going to have to be willing to follow him. So to pray, lead me not into temptation, means that we're willing to follow where he does not lead us. Or where he leads us not. How's that? Because if you're not willing to follow the Lord, then this is a hard prayer to pray, right? You're asking God to lead you somewhere where you're not going to follow. You're not willing to follow. And, and I've got to say these things, folks. We don't pray, lead me not into temptation, and then go home and flip the TV on to some channels that you know that they don't need to be on. Don't, don't pray, lead me not into temptation, and then fill your Kindle with books that promote sexual impurity. Don't pray, lead me not into temptation, and, and then play games or go to websites and places that you know you, you shouldn't be. Don't pray, lead me not into temptation, and remain in the wrong relationship. We're praying, you lead me because I'm willing to follow. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, No temptation is overtaking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful and will, with that, will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with that temptation make an, a way of escape. Which, among other things, is number one, there's always a way of escape. There's always an exit door. But number two, you've got to have the heart to escape. Right? So Jesus said we ought to pray for God's direction. But not only should we pray for God's direction, we need to pray for God's deliverance. Deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from the evil one. I... I I think that's a natural response of a child of God, right? Because with all that's good, this world's still full of evil. There's injustice and murder and exploitation and corporate greed and political corruption and on and on the list goes. And there are days that you look around and you go, ah, Lord, take me out of this. And I'm not talking about a death wish. Life is a gift from God and it needs to be lived. I'm just saying we have this promise of the coming of God's kingdom and there's some days we're just more ready for it to get here, right? And, and for all this wickedness to be over with. We're ready to be delivered from evil. But this is tied with what we've just prayed, right? Right? Now, I don't know about you, I grew up praying the Lord's Prayer, um, lead us not in temptation, deliver us from evil. But when you look at it, that word evil has a, has a direct, a definite article before it, before it. So it would be better translated the evil or the evil one. The evil one, right? That's, it seems more appropriate to translate it, deliver us from the evil one. Now, let me give you a couple of reasons why I, I, I've landed there. Number one, because when we pray deliver us from the evil one, we're praying the very same thing that Jesus prayed for us, right? Go to John 17, Jesus prayed for us, for his followers, and he said, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. 
that you should keep them from the evil one. The, the truth is behind temptation is the tempter, right? Behind all the lies is the father of lies. Behind sin is the deceiver. And, and Scripture gives us intent is intent. And we, we understand what it is, right? He wants to, as followers of Christ, he wants to sift us as wheat. He wants to deceive us so that we will deny and disobey the truth. And he wants to devour us like a lion devours his prey. So Jesus' prayer in John 17 is not that we would never face the trial or the temptation, but that the Father would keep Satan from winning the battle over us while we're here. See what he prayed? Look, he, he, listen, he said, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. And I thought about that, and my question was, why not? That's a pretty good prayer, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, it's a pretty good thought, right? Lord, take them, Father, take them out of this mess. They'd be better off in heaven with us. Or at least set this little corner of the world apart so they can live in peace and prosperity. Anybody want to amen that? But, but that's not what he said. He specifically said, I do not want you to take them out of this world. Well, why are we supposed to be here? Well, until the Lord calls us home, this is where we're to be, to live for Christ. We're to love our neighbors, to tell them that the evil one has been defeated by Jesus. The death does not have to win. It's not the winner. There is an almighty God who knows them and cares for them and has provided salvation for them to tell them that there is hope in Christ. But because of that, the evil one is going to attack you. He's going to accuse you. He's going to appeal to your sin nature. He's going to attempt to deceive you. So every day, every day, we need to pray, Lord, like a shepherd, lead me away from temptation and deliver me from the evil one who spreads that and who tempts me. So we're, we're praying what Jesus prayed for ourselves, but we're also when we pray, deliver us from the evil one, we are affirming the power of God. By, by just praying, God, deliver us from the evil one, we're saying, God, you are able to deliver us from the evil one. Second Thessalonians verse, chapter 3, verse 3, But the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. John, 1 John 4, 4, He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So this is really a prayer to keep the evil one from causing us to doubt God's grace or his goodness. It's a prayer that nothing would stop us from following God. And as believers, we need God's direction to keep us on the right path. But we also need God's protection to keep us from the wrong person. This is my first, I'll close with this. Okay, there may be two or three of those, but this is my first, I'll close with this. You go um, later in the book of Matthew, and Matthew shares the story of something that happened before Jesus was arrested. He took his disciples with him to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And, and, and as he, he told them to wait there, and then he took Peter, James, and John, and they went a little bit further, and he asked Peter, James, and John for them to stay close by and to watch while he prayed. Matthew said Jesus came back about an hour later and finds that they had fallen to sleep. And so he rouses them and he said, what? You couldn't even watch with me one hour? 
And then listen to what he said. He said, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. Because the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So Jesus comes back to them and gives them two asks. Watch and pray. Watch. Look what's going on around you. Stay alert. For us, it would be watch where you go. Watch what you look at. Watch what you allow into your mind and pray. What did Jesus want them to pray? I, I, I can't help but think that this may very well be what he had in mind for them to pray, among others. Oh, Father, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And then the prayer closes. And some of you, it may end right, it may have already ended right there. Um, Because for some, this last part of the prayer, it's not in it's not in the oldest manuscripts, some of the oldest manuscripts. But it's still consistent with the whole prayer. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now we've come full circle, right? Jesus begins the prayer with praise, and he ends it with praise. And he reminds us again that our prayer life is meant to be God-centered, not man-centered. And then maybe the most important word for this prayer to become real is that one last little word. What is it? Amen. Amen. And amen is more than it's over, I'm done. <laughs> That's, all right? Amen literally means so be it. So be it. So when we say amen, we're saying, Lord, this is what I want from my life. I'm not just saying words. I want this prayer to be my prayer. I want just I want you to let it be like that in my life. But I guess that's the deal, isn't it? We want that prayer to be our prayer. Do we want to line our lives up with the will of God? Do we, do we believe that everything we have comes from God? Are we willing to forgive? Are we, do we really want holiness and purity in our lives? Or do we just repeat it and go on? That's the question. Lord, I don't want to sin. And I'm grateful that you're a shepherd who will keep me from that temptation. And I'm grateful that you are powerful enough to deliver me from the evil one and the things that he wants to do to my life. Pray with me, would you? We are in a battle. Friends, this morning, I just want to remind you, God wants what's best for you. If you know Christ, he's your heavenly father. He desires to give you good things. He forgives you of your sin.
And he's a God who promises to lead you like a shepherd in the paths of righteousness. To walk with you and to protect you from the evil one. Can we, in our heart of hearts, amen that and say, that's what I want. I want that relationship. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not also freely give him, give us all things? God has provided for us in Christ. Today you've never trusted Christ. I, I call you to do that. I invite you to find that freedom and that forgiveness in Christ. There's some of us today, though, who just need to pray this last part. Lord, temptation is very real in my life. And I need your leadership. I need your presence. And like a sheep, trust the shepherd. I trust you. Lead me not into temptation. Deliver me instead from the evil one. Would you pray that today? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to sing here in just a second. I'm going to be standing here. Um, if today you want to know more about what it means to trust Christ, then please come see me or see House. He's going to be standing here as well. If you want to know more about church membership or believe that God's leading you here, then we invite you to come to Southern Crescent baptism by letter by statement will help you figure that out or if you need to just come kneel and pray say lord the battles are real i need your help then i invite you to do that as well we're going to stand and sing by now <laughs>
Amen. God is good. Amen. I hope you'll have a wonderful week. Um, that you'll just see the Lord in the middle of it all. Give him honor and glory and praise. Continue to pray for one another. Um, have folks who are um, in need and we want to be, be lifting them up in prayer. And let me tell you what's going on. We're going to have a church conference uh, Lord willing, a brief church conference, but uh, we're going to do that here in just a few minutes. We're going to have a, we're going to dismiss. I want you to make sure you find our guests, make them feel welcome. We have um, folks home that you might want to see, and um, so do that before, uh, and then guests, it'll give you an opportunity to, to be welcomed, and then you can slip on out, but then we're going to have just a brief church conference after that. And we'll have all that information for you. And uh, House has shared all of the announcements and the things, ministry opportunities that you need to know. And so now it's time for us to take the word of God under the power of the spirit of God and go live it out there. Amen. Let's pray and we'll go. Father, thank you so much for all you do. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.